Hi, Susan here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to cut and sew a muslin twill for your pant sloper block pattern so you can get a great fit and that's what's next. Okay guys, this is part of my pant sloper block pattern series that I'm doing. I already have five videos on there, but I really didn't show you the detail of how to make a muslin twill. And I think that's really important um, in general. And it's also going to be important because I will be having upcoming Zoom courses specifically on cutting, fitting, and tweaking the sloper block pattern pant pattern with uh, small groups and I want those people as well as all of you to understand the proper way to make a twill to be fitted and that's what we're going to do now. This is going to be using my sloper block pattern that is available in a PDF form on my website. It's the front uh, pant pattern, the back pant pattern, and the waistband. This does not have seam allowance. I'm going to show you how to do all of that. I'm going to be using a nice medium weight muslin with a, a kind of a prominent weave as you can see here with the grain lines visible and easy to tear because you want to make sure this twill is on the right grain when you're doing the fitting. Let's get to the first step. So I only need about 32 inches of the muslin so let me go ahead and tear a piece. Tearing the muslin is important because then you see where the grain is. All right you want to fold it so that it's doubled and usually I make you block the muslin but if you can see it is pretty straight this is great muslin this I'm going to put this in the description box below because it's excellent now if you have 45 inch goods you're going to need more fabric you're going to need about a yard and a half of fabric or muslin to do it if you have 45 inch goods okay so now we're going to get these pieces here we want to lay them out no seam allowance on this block pattern so that you have to have space around it to add your seam allowance make sure you do that flip it over if you have to like that and we're going to put the waistband down here as well very important is the grain lines. Make sure your grain lines are here and that you are going to make sure that it's parallel to the salvage or the fold and do that on all the pieces. Okay, so I cut up 34 inches and I have enough room here to tear. I wanna tear a piece here just for the waistband because it is not cutting two, it's only cutting one. That way I can lay it out separately and I don't have to cut it twice. These are steps that you do only for trying on a twill, not normally if you're cutting or sewing a pattern. I want you to trace around the entire pattern exactly where that seam line is when you're sewing it so you don't make a mistake and, and sew too close on the seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and trace all the way around these block pattern pieces before we add the seam allowance on all the pieces. Now it's time to add the seam allowance, so I want you to add a half of an inch all the way around these pattern pieces. So that you can cut this out and have the seam allowance for sewing. Parallel lines all the way around the pattern pieces, including the waistband. Okay, you can either weigh it down or pin it down. For the sake of the video, I'm going to pin it down so that you, so I can kind of move this around and show you. When you have that all done, you can go ahead and cut it out on the cutting line. Footnote guys, um, you can see that this pattern block has been altered quite a bit. There's been a lot of changes. So my hip level is no longer in the right spot. 
it is important to put a hip level in. So we're going to go ahead and reestablish that. Here is my grain line. You want to make a perpendicular line to the grain line like that and put a new hip level. And if I'm going down three and a half inches, I have to do the same thing on this side. It's perpendicular to my grain line. I'm establishing my new hip line. Okay. Also, you have the darts. I want you to continue the dart legs all the way up to the end of the muslin so you know where you're going to be sewing it. Then go ahead and get some tracing paper to mark your darts in. Use the dart like that all the way to the end and trace it out as well as the end of the dart on the back as well as the front. Alright guys, I forgot to put in the hip level with the tracing paper. You want to do the same thing. Put the tracing paper on both sides, making sure you get it, and then trace in that new hip level all the way across on both pattern pieces. Before removing the pattern pieces, put your notches in. That's where the dart legs start on the waistband level and also the extension on your waistband for the zipper area. Okay, then you can take off the pattern pieces. There you have it. Let's start with putting in the darts. I want you to go ahead and fold each dart to the point of the dart. Go ahead and pin them in. On all the pieces and then we'll get to the sewing machine. Okay, now with the machine set to the stitch length of two and a half to three, I'm just going to use a contrasting um, thread so you can see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to backstitch at the waist just to keep those darts in. And sewing each one of the darts to the dark, dark point. Like that. Find the two front panels. You can see this is the back panel. It's pretty long crotch. These are the front panels and putting right sides together like that with your pencil marking showing on the right side like that. I want you to sew around the crotch and stopping about seven inches down here where the opening should be if you had a fly zipper. So just sew from seven inches down, sew the curve on the crotch of the front. Now take the back crotch seam and put those together and sew that at a half of an inch seam allowance. It's nice to see the line that you can follow just to make sure you're getting exactly that half of an inch all the way up.
Okay, as you can see, my hip level is on the inside, and I want that to be on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and actually trace it onto the right side, so that line shows up there. Now, right sides together, you're going to we're going to sew the inseam with the crotch, back crotch. matching the front crotch like this put a pin there at the crotch la seam and we're going to go from the crotch seam to the hem on one leg half of an inch and then we're going to flip it over and sew the other side with the inner leg. That way this is always in the right spot and we can sew it down on both sides. With the seam allowance open on both sides going right at the intersection and then sewing your half of an inch on each side of the legs. Now that you have both of the inner legs sewn in I want you to go ahead and get the crotches and clip a little bit to the actual seam line. This will just make fitting a little bit easier. Just on the strategic part of the curve. Like that. Now take the inner legs and get it situated so you've got the inner legs that we just sewn and the crotch. Now we're going to sew in the side seams on this side, half of an inch. as well as this side. Be careful to get your half of an inch seam allowance while you're sewing so that this fit is going to be accurate. So both sides. Now I'm at the ironing board and I'm using a sleeve hem. You want to press all of the seams open doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want them mostly open and pressed. It will aid in the fit, so you'll get a proper look of what's going on with that. So all the seams, the outer seam, the inner leg seam, and the crotch seam. Like that. Take the waistband, right sides together. You're going to sew a half of an inch on both ends. This side as well as this side. You're going to turn it. You can snip off that corner at the end. 
on an angle like that, turn it to the right side, and then press it flat. Now flip the pant to the right side. Okay, here is the front. I also want you to note that I have pressed the darts going towards the center back flat and also on the front towards the center front flat. I then indicated the center front half of an inch from that edge and put a mark on both sides. like that. Then I've taken my waistband and the notch where the extension goes on the left side. Fold that left side back. Put the waistband together. And pin all the way along the waistline. Securing the waistband all three layers. Okay, I've pinned everything around the waistline and I'm at the end here and I want to make let you know that you want to make sure that when you pin this that it ends exactly where your half of an inch seam allowance line is on the waistband. If it doesn't, please adjust whatever you need to so that that waistband is exactly the right width of your circumference of your waist before you get to the sewing machine. Lastly, turn up a half of an inch on the inside on the hem of the legs and go ahead and press that on both sides and stitch a half of an inch on the front. There you have it, the twelve ready to try on. Make sure, like I said, on the waistband you've got one, you've got the one side flat and then the other side is folded back that way you can pin it in the front easier. Just press down the seam allowance inside and you are all set to try on your twill. And ask me about the Zoom classes. You can also email and inquire when they're going to start. Alrighty, I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Come on board guys and let's get some designs made. Thank you. Bye-bye.